Hey, hello everyone, Fox here, and it's time to follow up on the future of State of Decay 2 because Undead Labs had another stream, this time talking about the Bounty Broker, which is a system that is going to be released alongside the Critical Response Weapons DLC. What we're going to do is take a look at a pair of quotes in the new stream that answer some of the questions that were raised in the previous stream. Then we're going to go over what the Bounty Broker is. Following that up, we will talk about both the problems and the promise of this Bounty Broker. And then we will end things with some more quotes and commentary. Just like in the previous video, I will tell you what I think the Bounty Broker is going to bring to the game and how it's going to influence the future of State of Decay 2. I also want to point out that it's not my goal to browbeat Undead Labs, but I will also say what I believe needs to be said. So let's get started with two interesting quotes. And uh, I think, you know, we've, we've put a lot of, of thought and effort into this uh, to be more than just... Uh, new weapons like we want it to be uh, a new way to engage with the game. Uh, we keep getting a bunch of questions uh, Since we're on the topic of weapon purchasing uh, whether or not we're going to be introducing new ways to get prestige So you can get the daybreak weapons and ammo uh, Prestige is something that is definitely uh, We're thinking about a lot uh, It is a great way for us to expose content to people um, and we have yet to come up with any uh, with any concrete plans yeah. at the moment for how we're going to be able to get you more prestige and more things to buy with prestige in the future. But, yeah, rest assured, we are thinking about that. Yeah, prestige, getting prestige into the economy is, is high on our list, and we just want to make sure we do it in a fun and interesting way. Yeah. You should notice that the language here is much, much stronger, much more definitive, and it's directly addressing some of the issues that were raised about the Critical Response DLC, in that it was basically just weapons with different names and whatnot, and they are directly addressing that here, as well as prestige. Notice that Brant chimed in directly afterwards and made a much more definitive statement saying that prestige is a high priority. This is really good news because now we can say for sure that Undead Labs is absolutely aware of two of the major issues that we have over the future of State of Decay 2. So on one hand, I'm not going to ask people to not be upset. I'm not going to ask people to not feel disappointed. But I will say on the other hand that let's wait and see a bit longer since Undead Labs has directly addressed our issues, at least verbally. Of course, there is something to be said about words becoming actions, but time is required for words to become actions, so I say let's wait and see. I don't think that's unreasonable. Anyways, let's move on to what the Bounty Broker is. So this Bounty Broker's name is Cash Beaumont, and he is inspired by a very specifically American stereotype, this overweight Texan huckster of shady goods. If you're not an American, you probably haven't encountered this stereotype before. He's typically this guy who's really, really friendly, like aggressively friendly, and he's normally selling something like uh, used cars, something that you may not want, but he's trying to get you to buy it. But it can also be a rich and wealthy tycoon who may or may not have gotten to where he is through questionable means. I was immediately reminded of Doug Dibidone, owner of the Dimsdale Dibidone. Hello, son! Timmy Turner, my name is Doug Dibidome, owner of the Dimsdale Dibidome. So suffice to say, I like the presentation, but presentation does not good content make. What does the bounty broker do? So Cash Beaumont, the bounty broker, is really unique because he's going to be the first permanent, consistent NPC in the game. Once he moves into your map, he will always be there day in, day out, every day, morning, sunset, and night. And what this guy wants to do is sell bounties, but the currency he accepts isn't just influence, he also accepts bounties, which are a new type of challenge or missions that are being added into the game. What this means is once he moves in, he's always going to be there. You won't have to wonder if the wandering merchant has come in. No, you can just visit this guy anytime you want. He's always going to be in the same spot based on the region you chose of the main three. He's not going to show up in Heartland, however. 
He's also completely immune to the zombies and presumably immune to player damage as well. He doesn't fight them and the zombies pretty much ignore him. But his main deal is that he is going to offer you weapons. At the start, he's going to be selling the World War II DLC pack and the Critical Response DLC pack. These weapons will only be obtainable through Cash Bowman, and what that means is that the previously available World War II weapons will no longer drop in the world, and the World War II Wandering Merchant will be removed. So the way Cash Beaumont works is the weapons that he offers come in two states. They're either locked or unlocked. If they are unlocked, which all of the World War II weapons will be considered unlocked, you just buy them for influence. On the other hand, all of the critical response DLC weapons, so all the police-themed weapons, they are going to start out locked, and you will not be able to access them until you do the bounties. And each weapon will have a different bounty associated with it. You can have up to three bounties at a time, so you can't just collect all of them all at once. They are completely account-bound, meaning progressing in one save file advances all of your save files. So if you had to kill 12 screamers with a rifle and you killed three in one file, three in another file, and three in a third file, your total progress across all of your save files on that account will be nine. And when you finish a bounty, you can return to Cash Beaumont, or the weapon will become unlocked, and he will pay you in one copy of that weapon. It is unlocked across your entire account, so all of the save files, and if you want multiple copies of the weapon, you can then buy them for influence. You can have as many as you want, as long as you have the influence to pay for it. Some of these bounties include things like killing 12 screamers with a rifle, running over 50 zombies with a car, killing 50 zombies in close combat, so pretty simple stuff that won't take too long to do. One of the lengthier ones I saw was to kill 12 play guards, which if you're playing on standard zone means that you will have to go to another region to collect all 12 kills. But in Nightmare Zone, there are definitely more than 12 play guards. Of course, if you have killed half of them by time the bounty broker has come out, or maybe you've cleared the entire region by time it's come out, you'll obviously have to move to a new region to refresh the presence of play guards to complete the bounty. Speaking of Nightmare Zone, the unlocks are completely across all of your save files regardless of the difficulties. So unlocking a weapon in Standard Zone also unlocks it in the Nightmare Zone and vice versa. It should also be noted that you cannot pick these weapons up. So say one of your friends wanted to give you one of these weapons. If you have not completed the challenge and unlocked that weapon, you won't be able to pick it up. But presumably when you have unlocked the challenge, you will be able to pick it up, but they didn't directly address that. Speaking of other players, if you are playing together in the cooperative mode, your challenges will not bleed into each other. Each player will have their own bounties active. At any rate, now you know who Cash Beaumont is and what the bounty broker that is launching alongside, or really it's just a part of the Critical Response DLC, now you know what he is. Let's talk about the problems and the promises, because this is, after all, the theme, the future of State of Decay 2. What does Cash Beaumont bring to the table? The first thing that you need to understand is that the purpose of the Bounty Broker is not really to give you challenges to do, it's to give players a way to access DLC weapons without relying on the random chance of getting them in the game. In other words, I'm saying that the bounties, at least how they're currently implemented, are gimmicky. Why do I say that? Well, once you've completed the bounties, that's all she wrote. They are done. Permanently. These bounties are not sustainable. Once you've completed the bounties, they are not replaced by anything else. There's no daily bounties, there's no weekly bounties, and they are permanently unlocked across all of your account. Remember that the World War II weapons, they do not require bounties to unlock. They don't have bounties, so it's just the Critical Response DLC weapons. And Undead Labs said that there won't be really any more bounties until they add more weapons. And while they have thought about something of a repeatable bounty system, a weekly bounty system, it's just something that they've been thinking about. So my point here is that you are going to burn these bounties out very quickly, and then the bounty broker is just going to be the weapons merchant. So that's the first problem that I foresee with the Bounty Broker. Don't worry, we'll get to Promise, the positive news, but first let's focus on the problems. The next one is about optics. 
By this I mean that Undead Labs is presenting the Bounty Broker as just a way to get DLC weapons into the hands of the players without relying on RNG, the random nature of the game. But I promise you that is not how the typical player is going to understand it. They are going to think that Cash Beaumont is some kind of daily or weekly system. And I guarantee you that they are going to be disappointed when they see that all of the bounties are burned out and they've got nothing else to do. And while some players may come to Undead Lab's defense here and say that, well, if the people are upset about this, they don't understand the purpose of Cash Beaumont, the bounty broker, I would counter that and say that this is an issue of not meeting expectations, knowing what the expectations a player is going to be. Maybe Undead Labs, they don't play a lot of shooter looter type games. Maybe they don't play a lot of MMORPGs, but anyone who has played those, that's what their expectation is going to be. They are going to think that the bounty broker is a repeatable daily system. And it's really important to preemptively understand what people are going to want so that you can either match or beat their expectations. And I think the bounty broker is definitely going to fall flat here. So number two is going to be poor optics. That's the second problem. Players are going to think that Cash Beaumont is a daily or weekly challenge system, something to continuously log into the game and participate in. And while the argument can be made that they don't understand the purpose of Cash Beaumont, I think it's even more important that Undead Labs understands this is how people are going to feel. And they should be planning this already. They should be planning to at least meet people's expectations, but better yet, they should be trying to exceed them. The third and final problem that I'm going to talk about the Bounty Broker is really the issue that his value is directly tied to what he's selling. In other words, if a store opens and it's not selling anything you want, then it doesn't matter that a brand new store opened up. It's not selling what you want. Why would you go there except maybe once to browse what it has to offer? As long as the bounty broker is selling these really boring, repetitive, reskinned weapons, guns with different names and similar stats, then he's going to be a boring mechanic. He doesn't have to be, though, and that's where we're going to talk about the promise, the possibilities of the Bounty Broker and what it brings to the table. So first off, and this is probably one that people haven't thought of, is that Cash Beaumont is State of Decay 2's first permanent character. And by that, I mean the first NPC that has a set definitive personality in the game across everyone's save files. And that means he actually could have a story if Undead Labs adds on to him. He could be a funny mimetic character because he's based on this like super stereotypical Texan huckster. And he's the first character that's actually going to be a concrete, non-changing character. The first thing we've got to like a Lily Ritter or a Marcus. So that could actually build the something and that could actually give people something of a character that they can latch onto. That's something people didn't like about State of Decay 2 compared to State of Decay 1. Even though the characters in State of Decay 1 are super, super basic, they were consistent and you kind of grew attached to them over time. You don't have that in State of Decay 2 because everyone is just disposable, faceless, randomly generated people. Yes, you've got Lieutenant Meredith, Sasquatch, and Lily, but they're on the radio. You don't interact with them. It's not personal. They're like these disembodied voices you sometimes hear. Cash Beaumont is their first opportunity to have a mimetic character that is consistent with some kind of story. The second promise that Cash Beaumont could offer us is if he sold things that we actually care about. If he had bounties that had a time limit, perhaps a few days, for vital things that you need on a daily basis or just hard to get things. What if he had a bounty and he would pay you in rucksacks of a particular resource, or maybe he'd pay you a very rare weapon like a Eternal Guard's Infinite Rage? Or what if he paid you in knowledge? What if you did a very difficult bounty for him and then he gets you in touch with a recruitable survivor with a skill of your choice? Or maybe after you do a difficult bounty for him, you can generate an enclave onto your map that is 
is automatically allied and it specifically has an enclave bonus of your choice. So if you specifically wanted the Grease Monkey guys, you know, the mechanics, or maybe you wanted the Brewmasters, the guys who give you food, or maybe you want an enclave that specifically gives you beds, that would be an awesome way for Cash Beaumont to actually be a important and powerful and useful role in the game. It could be something that everyone can benefit from instead of just people who are gun enthusiasts who enjoy these specific guns in real life and have a personal attachment to them. At any rate, though, that's what I think about Cash Beaumont, the bounty broker. He could be an interesting addition to the game, but at present he isn't sustainable. People are going to have a different idea of what he's for, and currently he just sells really boring items. But anyways, let's move on to some of the quotes that I have chosen from the Undead Lab stream. First, I want you to hear this quote from the very, very end of the stream, and I want you to keep it in mind as we go through the rest of the quotes. We're excited to be able to continue to give you content, um, yeah. and yeah. And your feedback is how we, you know, determine what you're going to be most excited about, right? Yeah. Like, that's how we, that's how we uh, pick our priorities. So we just heard that the feedback determines the priorities of the developers. Well, let's talk about some of these priorities. First, a quote about character customization. Uh, we've, we've got the same question that gets asked every stream. Can we get character customization? Stay tuned. We cannot talk about current or future plans. Yeah, you guys know this. <laughs> That's rule number one. Don't ask us what we're doing uh, next. Be excited that we're talking your, about this. That's not out yet, right? Your, That's your, right. Get hype. That's your, new for us. Your desires have been noted, and it is something that we are very aware that the community is uh, interested in seeing, and uh, we cannot talk about whether or not we are actually going to do uh, anything with that in the immediate future. That's how we, that's how we uh, pick our priorities. The same question that gets asked every stream, pick our priorities. The same question that is asked every stream, but the feedback determines priorities. Character customization, World War II weapons. Character customization, critical response DLC pack. The feedback determines the priorities. Still on the subject of character customizations, the question of beards was raised. We also keep getting a bunch of questions on beards. Uh, I actually don't know the reason why we... Oh, no, we don't have beards because uh, all, the, all the face models have slightly different geometry on them. Yeah. So having to adapt the... Uh, uh, adapt a bunch of beards to fit a bunch of different faces is actually a lot of work. A bunch of people keep asking about beards, but the feedback determines the priorities. If it's difficult to do beards, why not just pick one of the faces and do beards for just one of the face variants? Some beards would be better than no beards. Next up, they talk about rain again. Yeah, uh, similar to the question we had last uh, last week about rain. Uh, as soon as you get rain, you have to re-record re everything uh, yep. just wet. Another constant request is rain, but the feedback determines the priorities. And no, you don't have to re-record everything wet. You could do that, but that is not a must-have for rain. What you need are overcast skies, some actual rain falling down, and some stock rain sound effects. If you want to go the extra distance, put in some thunder and maybe make a little bit of flash of lightning. You don't have to make wet textures. You don't have to record every single surface in the game with unique sound effects for water raining on top of it. Some simple rain effects would go a surprising distance in the game, as shown by the simple effects in the Gauntlet of Heartland. The Gauntlet has three effects. It has this red filter that gives everything almost a Martian appearance. The plague walls emit this weird glowing crap at night, and there is a unique soundtrack, this bizarre, creepy, otherworldly soundtrack. And that was effective. You could apply these same low friction design approaches to rain. It might not be a legendary rain. It might not be the most immersive rain. It might not even be great rain, but it would be sufficient. 
The last quote I want to leave us with is another big request, and that is for a flamethrower. Oh, uh, we've also got a bunch of questions about flamethrowers. Um, I think we mentioned this last stream, but uh, one of the big problems that we kind of have with flamethrowers is that we have to figure out how to, uh, um, like, it's a, it's another ammo type, uh, and it's another set of animations. It's and another ammo type, it's another set of animations, and uh, fire particles are some of the oh, yeah, worst expensive. thing you can possibly like display for like runtime. Oh yeah, as the as the guy who had to implement and then optimize. Speaking of performance resources, yes. the fire system. Yeah, uh, setting fire to a whole bunch of stuff would be uh, actually kind of uh, problematic. I have no idea what they are talking about here. Once again, this is another big time request from the community, but the feedback determines priorities. The Independence DLC is full of fire particle effect weapons, and two of the weapons, the Star Shank Launcher and the Pyro Launcher, are both weapons that have unique ammo types that no other weapon in the entire game uses. What's more is you can already set fire to immense quantities of zombies, as many zombies as the game can throw at you, and I play on Nightmare Zone. I burn huge quantities of zombies. I don't see what difference it would make whether you are burning a whole bunch of zombies with a flamethrower or a whole bunch of zombies with the pyro launcher or the fuel bombs. You're still just burning a huge quantity of zombies. It shouldn't be a problem. People really, really want a good old-fashioned classic flamethrower. And yes, I understand the pyro launcher is kind of an analog in functionality to the flamethrower. But this is what people are asking for. The feedback determines the priorities, does it not? And this is what people want. They want a good old classic flamethrower. But hey, that more or less wraps up what I think. To conclude it all in one final statement, if it's true that the feedback determines the priorities for State of Decay 2, the future of the game, then Undead Labs needs to be working on a brand new map for us to play on added to the core rotation, more accessible ways to obtain prestige points, character customization, beards, New facilities and interesting weapons that are not reskins. Rain. Flamethrowers. And the ability to recruit your survivors from your pool of legacy survivors. If it's true that the feedback determines the priorities of Undead Labs, then that is the consistent feedback. You heard it from themselves. People constantly asking for these things. But those are my thoughts about the issue. Now I'm asking you, what do you think? Am I being too harsh on Undead Labs? Tell me down in the comments section. But until next time, remember to like this video if it was informative. Subscribe for future State of Decay 2 content. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.